Coming up on the Children's Hour, we get bugged with the Albuquerque Bioparks curator of entomology, Jason Schaller, who lets bugs loose at the outpost performance space with our kids crew. We learn what makes a bug, well, a bug, and why should we love bugs? Do bugs have feelings? That's the billion dollar question there. It uh, goes into the philosophical debate of what is consciousness. Learn about insects and space and find out how to make cricket tacos as we explore the incredible diversity of insects on planet Earth. Mixed with excellent music, get bugged with us coming up on the Children's Hour. The Children's Hour is an independent production of the Children's Hour Incorporated, a New Mexico-based nonprofit. We're distributed by Native Voice One, the Native American radio network. It's time for the Children's Hour. Kids Public Radio. When is a baseball player like a spider? I don't know when. When she catches a fly. <laughs> it's time for the Children's Hour, Kids Public Radio. Hey, can we talk? And on sees best, there's something I need to get off my chest. People don't like us. It's sad, but it's true. Whether we crawl, fly, or dig, or black, brown, or blue. But I'm telling you, insects are misunderstood. For every small bite, we do so much good. Why do we bug you? I just don't quite see if it's anything more than bug bigotry So why do we bug you? I don't quite see Why do we bug you? Why, why, why do we bug you? Why do we bug you? Yes, we're annoying but I'll swear to the end Insects aren't your foes, they're among your best friends. I know what you're thinking, this bug is a jerk. Yet, listen to all of our great unknown work. We decompose waste and pollinate flowers in beautiful fields that we fertilize for hours. And at our most selfless, We are a nice dish. Yeah, we're food for mammals, birds, reptiles, and fish. So why do we bug you? I just don't quite see if it's anything more than bug bigotry. Why do we bug you? I just don't quite see. Why do we bug you? Why do we bug you? Why do we bug you? Yes, we're annoying, but I'll swear to the end. Insects aren't foes, they're among your best friends. There are nine million species that you never knew. So why focus on the few that really bug you? So if you hear buzzing or see us fly by, think before grabbing a swatter of flies. So why do we bug you? I just don't quite see if it's anything more than bug bigotry. Why do we bug you? I just don't quite see. Why do we bug you? 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 That's William Shatner. Why do we bug you? From Where Will the Animals Sleep? 
songs for kids and other living things. I'm Katie Stone. You're listening to the Children's Hour, and I'm at the Outpost Performance Space and online with a whole lot of great kids. Hello, everyone. And who do we have with us today? Hi, it's Thorfinn. Hi, it's Luminata. Hello, it's Amadeus. Hi, it's Amaya. I am so glad you are not too creeped out to be with us right now. And you listeners might be wondering, what are you talking about? But we have literally brought bugs into the Outpost performance space. And in fact, one of them is crawling on our guest. And you'll meet him in a few minutes. His name is Jason Schaller. He's the entomologist at the Bugarium, which is part of the Albuquerque Biopark here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where the Children's Hour is based. We're going to try not to get bugged today on the Children's Hour. Up next, this is David Holt. Stick with us. This is the Children's Hour. Oh, there ain't no bugs on me. There ain't no bugs on me. There may be bugs on some of you mugs, but there ain't no bugs on me. Well, I was walking through the field, playing oh so gaily. Along came a big cold wind, froze my ukulele. Oh, now there ain't no bugs on me. There ain't no bugs on me. Well, there may be bugs on some of you mugs, but there ain't no bugs on me. What do you think, Sam? Mosquito, he flies high. Mosquito, he flies low. Mosquito better not fly on me, or he won't fly no more. Well, now there ain't no bugs on me. There ain't no bugs on me. There may be bugs on some of you mugs, but there ain't no bugs on me. Well, now Peanut sitting on the railroad track, its heart was all a flutter. Along came a big freight train. Uh oh, peanut butter. Oh, there ain't no bugs on me. There ain't no bugs on me. There may be bugs on some of you mugs, but there ain't no bugs on me. Bless them. Oh, there ain't no bugs on me. There ain't no bugs on me. There may be bugs on some of you mugs, but there ain't no bugs on me. I said there ain't no bugs on me. There ain't no bugs on me. There may be bugs on some of you mugs, but there ain't no bugs on me. There may be bugs on some of you mugs, but there ain't no bugs on me. David Holt, right here on the Children's Hour, where we're trying not to get bugged. Our guest today on the show is the bug guy at the Albuquerque Biopark. And when I say that, he does it all. Yeah, I'm an entomologist, uh, the curator of entomology at the Biopark. So essentially the manager of the Bugarium, the Rearing Laboratory, and the Butterfly Pavilion, and that whole corner of the park. So you're really the bug guy at the zoo, That really. is my preferred title, bug guy. Excellent. Jason Schaller, welcome to the Children's Hour. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. It's uh, great to be back. It is really great to have you back. And in the room today here at the Outpost are some kids who love bugs. Over here. And there are some kids who maybe don't love bugs. Yeah, they look weird. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. They definitely are a little freaky looking. Um, It's, yeah, very, very common. A lot of people do have a bug phobia. There's just some natural instincts towards that. A lot of it is just learned culturally and stuff. But um, part of my job, uh, my overarching job, is to do what I can to show the public and show kids especially that, hey, these things are actually really amazing and uh, almost entirely harmless to us. There's very few that can actually hurt us. And even those are, you know, very unlikely to hurt you compared to some other animals out there. So what does it exactly mean to be an entomologist? That's a great question. Um, So an entomologist is essentially a scientist who studies terrestrial arthropods. And by terrestrial arthropod, uh, that's a fancy word for bugs. 
Um, that generally means insects, um, arachnids, centipedes, and millipedes, which together make up the group, the myriapods. And then also uh, terrestrial crustaceans like isopods will fit under that. Now, arthropods include the crustaceans as well. Uh, most of those are aquatic and marine, like crabs and lobsters and shrimp um, and barnacles. Um, but Crustaceans are actually more closely related to insects than arachnids or centipedes and millipedes are. So um, at the Bugarium, uh, one of my things I like to tell people is that the word bug, even though it's kind of a common term for any sort of small, creepy, crawly animal with a lot of legs, it's a really good synonym for arthropod. Most of the things we think of as bugs are in the phylum arthropoda or the arthropods. So again, the crustaceans, the arachnids, the centipedes and millipedes, and the insects. Um, so those are like the four main groups of arthropods. And the reason we call our exhibit the Bugarium is because calling it an insectarium leaves out, you know, a lot of groups. There's a lot of arachnids in there. There's a lot of centipedes and millipedes in there. We have crustaceans in there. But generally, uh, the marine arthropods, uh, people that study those tend to get lumped into marine biologist instead of entomologist. Because they kind of just behave like the bugs of the ocean. Yeah, they are the bugs of the ocean. Mm. So what exactly is the difference between a true bug and stuff that isn't technically considered a true bug? Another great question. Uh, the term true bug was kind of invented to differentiate the common word bug, which again basically means arthropod, versus um, a group of insects known as the true bugs, or the order Hemiptera. And Hemiptera, that includes your stink bugs, squash bugs, assassin bugs, leaf-footed bugs, cicadas, aphids, water bugs, water striders, back swimmers. Um, and what the Hemiptera all have in common is they have uh, their mouth parts have evolved into these uh, this piercing, sucking rostrum type thing. And a lot of them use it to drink plant juices like aphids or stink bugs, but a lot of them use it to inject venom and drink the juices out of their prey like assassin bugs and water bugs. Now, um, I know needle-like sounds a little ugh to some people, but majority of hemipterans are never going to bite you. Um, there are exceptions. Um, one of them is bed bugs. That is a hemipteran, so a bed bug is a true bug. And um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a story for another time. They're nasty. Is this just like their tongue that you're talking about is basically like a straw or a needle? Not quite. It's actually um, so all insects have the same basic mouth parts. Uh, the ancestral mouth parts are starts with a labrum, which is kind of like an overlip, followed by a pair of mandibles, followed by a pair of maxillae, followed by a labium. It's a mouth sandwich. A mouth sandwich. Yeah, and the two inner parts of the sandwich are like the mandibles and like the little tasty things under the mandibles. And then the other ones are the bread. But the other ones can also be part <laughs> of that extended uh, whole mouth part collection. Do they have taste buds? Speaking of tasty? Yes. Absolutely. In fact, uh, their antennae are covered in, uh, well, essentially taste buds. So taste buds and smell receptors are essentially the same thing. They're chemoreceptors. They pick up chemicals that trigger a response. A lot of insects have uh, chemoreception on their feet. A lot of butterflies actually taste with their feet as well as their antennae. Similarly in uh, moths, and they can smell the females from uh, up to a couple miles away. What? So that's how they find their mates. That's amazing. A couple miles? To jump in about that, they've done tests to see how much of the of a smell certain insects need to detect to actually find their way to the opposite gender of their species. And they found, particularly with male silkworms, that they only needed to receive 40 molecules a second of the female's scent uh, pheromone to actually find where the female was or to even detect it. Now, 40 molecules a second, you think, oh, that's 40. But when you consider how small of a number that is and how small that is even to them, it is a truly astonishing feat of evolution that they're even able to detect that. Yeah, that is, um, every time I hear that number, it blows my mind. When you think about it, like, for you to taste the faintest amount of sugar in a glass of water, that's like on the order of billions of sugar molecules for you to just barely be able to taste it. So for 40 is just, that almost doesn't make sense. That's how good that sense of smell is. But yeah, thanks for bringing that one up. Wow, there are all kinds of brilliant people in this room today. On the Children's Hour, we're at the Outpost in Albuquerque, New Mexico with Jason Schaller. He is the curator of entomology at the Albuquerque Biopark. Lots, obviously, more for all of us to learn today on the Children's Hour. Stick with us. Woo! One, two, three. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and they all play games as the ladies go to picnic. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and they all play games 
as the ladybug pick. They had twelve sacks, so they had sack races. They fell on the back and they fell on the face. The ladybug twelve as the ladybug pick. They played jump rope, but the rope it broke, so they all sat around telling knock knock jokes. The ladybug twelve as the ladybug pick. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and they all play games at the ladybug pick. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and they all play games at the ladybug's picnic. They've talked about purchase of furniture rugs and fire insurance for the ladybugs. The ladybugs twelve at the ladybugs picnic. Just one night. 
That's Claudia Robin Gunn from Sing for the Earth, Little Wild Animals. And she's singing about bugs that sound maybe a little unfamiliar because she's from New Zealand. Gordy McKeeman before that from Folk for Little Folk, Volume 1, with the Sesame Street tune, Ladybug's Picnic. Lots more coming up as we get bugged. You're listening to the Children's Hour Kids Public Radio. We'll be right back. New Mexico Department of Cultural Affairs supports the Children's Hour. International Archaeology Day is October 19th, 2024. Archaeology at your fingertips. More at nmarchaeology.org. Electric Playhouse supports the Children's Hour. Now open in Las Vegas, Nevada, inside the forum shops at Caesars Palace. Learn more at electricplayhouse.com. We're getting bugged on the Children's Hour. This is Mr. Elephant. Bugs are your friends. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And they live in your backyard. Bugs are your friends. They really are. Watch out because they sting Ants make me want to dance Their social structures are really quite advanced By digging tunnels the soil is enhanced Just don't get them in your pants Bugs are your friends Yes they are, yes they are them with your heart. Listening to the Children's Hour, I'm Katie Stone, and today on the show, we're getting bugged with Jason Schaller. He's the curator of entomology at the Albuquerque Biopark, and he runs something called the Bugarium, which is a whole section of the biopark here that's dedicated to insects. And we've been learning from him why he loves bugs a little bit. He's sitting here at the Outpost Performance Space with a giant bug on him, which we have to learn more about. But first, the kids have a lot more questions for you, Jason. Let's go over to Amadeus. So terrestrial arthropods are a way more diverse group than any other types of animals on this planet. Like there are hundreds of thousands of species of even just beetles. So why is it that they are so diverse? Well, that's a few main reasons. Uh, Number one is simply their size. So because they're smaller than most mammals and reptiles, they can reproduce much faster and therefore they can evolve much faster. They have huge numbers of offspring, so you get more genetic diversity with each generation, and that's the basis of evolution is genetic diversity and speciation radiating out. Aside from that, um, the whole design of having this uh, really thick uh, skin called an exoskeleton, now the exoskeleton is just their skin. Um, It's not a special shell that they wear, it is their skin. What makes their skin unique is that because it's made of a material called chitin, they can harden certain parts of that exoskeleton so that they're almost rock solid while leaving other parts of that 
exoskeleton soft and flexible. That innovation itself is really important for them being able to survive in a wide variety of habitats. The beetles have very thick exoskeletons compared to other insects, so they're very solid. And because they have that larval stage like a butterfly does, they can develop this super hard exoskeleton just one time. That allows beetles to get bigger than any other insect. So the Goliath beetle here on my shoulder, this is one of the biggest insects in the world. And they can do that because they can get to their maximum size underground where it's extremely stable and they're well protected and they have all the time in the world to slowly eat and grow. And basically the beetle is this ultra train tank. It is solid, indestructible. You're literally tapping on the back of this beetle. That is the back of a beetle that he's actually tapping on. Yep. And that's also my method to get them to get off your hand sometimes because they can (laughs) grab on very tightly and be hard to move. How big can they grow? Maximum size is roughly uh, 220 grams in the larval stage, which is a little more than half a pound. Our biggest grubs in the Bulgarium, we have a type of elephant beetle, and ours get to about 140 grams, which is uh, more than a third of a pound. How big would that be? Like, if you were showing me with your your hand... So I have this Goliath beetle here. He's a very large male, so he's considered a major male for the species, but an exceptionally giant one could be the size of my fist. Whoa. Kybia. How old can the beetle get up So they're actually, uh, once they're in their adult stage, they're not very long-lived. So to give a general example, they spend about a year to a year and a half as a larva slash pupa. And then once they're adults, they usually stay dormant for a couple of months. And then once they wake up and they're active adults, they usually live eight to ten months. And that's for a goliath beetle. You've been on our radio show before with the Goliath beetle, so this probably isn't the exact same guy, is it? Probably his great-great-grandson, maybe great-great-great-grandson at this point. We are on Generation 6 now. Oh, wow. Amadeus. So how intelligent are bugs? Not very. Um, Most insects have what we'd call a ganglion instead of an actual brain. It's basically a nerve cluster that, you know, has a lot of programs that respond to stimuli like i always joke that you could write an insect's brain in javascript like they're not that complicated so you mentioned that they function sort of like in modes and they respond to specific stimuli in a very specific way now for example in people say if we saw a tiger we might get a chemical released in our brain that makes us feel fear as an emotion and then we want to run away so for them do they have feelings to an extent or do they just respond to certain stimuli in certain ways without really feeling it that's the billion dollar question there it's uh it goes into the philosophical debate of what is consciousness and that is something that um it's i've always had a struggle with finding any sort of good answer to it but i look at it this way um if i'm growing sugar crystals in a jar and i change the temperature or the pressure that changes how they respond the crystals respond differently to different stimuli they'll grow in different shapes or at different speeds and stuff but this is really a is sugar conscious or is it just responding to, you know, physics? Um, And all the way up to a human brain, it is the same physics that are operating. So at what point do we say, oh, this thing is feeling versus this thing is not feeling? And that's a really hard question to answer. So I feel like to not lose your mind, you have to draw the line somewhere. Well, Jason Schaller is the curator of entomology at the Albuquerque Biopark. It is our zoo and our botanic gardens and also the place where Jason works, the Bugarium. We have links and pictures and so much more posted to childrenshour.org. Jason, why should we love bugs? Well, you should love them because they are a really good representative of just the universe. Like they are... They represent everything that's beautiful about nature, diversity, perseverance. And entomology is one of those things that kind of ties everything together. You find they kind of affect everything and they're tied to every field of science. So like they're model organisms for genetics. They're an important part of agricultural sciences. Um, They're, you know, model organisms for developmental biology. They're an important part of botany, ecology. You can see them everywhere. They're in your backyard. You can raise caterpillars or roaches, watch them grow super quickly, change before your eyes. They're like a very hands-on, readily available chunk of the magic of the universe that you can just have right in front of you whenever you want. Jason Schaller, thank you so much for being with us on the Children's Hour. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity and yeah. Bombardier B, so lying on 
my back. I say, I'm Bombardier Beetle laying on my back. Hard to believe. I'm the sole survivor of a dive bomb bird attack. Preposterous. And I'm Bombardier Beetle laying on my back. Of course, my, my mandibles are out, ready to strike. Or my poison blasting cannon, if the bird or his friends come back. If they ever come back, that is, blasted birds. Oh, I'm all right. I'll be right as rain just as soon as you know it. Look at those birds, running away. Come back here, I'll show you. Uh, avian menace, don't worry about me. If someone could just come and turn me back over. No, never mind, I'm all right. I'm jolly good, actually. Just have to keep a stiff upper mandible, that's all. My word, I'll be back on my feet in no time. No, you've not heard the last from me. It's just a little scrape. It'll grow back. But now I feel splendid. Yes, yeah, splendid, I tell you. Right as rain. Avian menace. Oh dear. I get, I have two brothers. I know that um, I've told this story earlier. Uh, my older brother's name is Fred, and when we were growing up, we found out that he was afraid of spiders. And it was about this time of year, and my younger brother found this out, and he was just delighted. He went up to a big spider web and he grabbed this big black spider out of the web and he goes, Fred, check this out. He pops it in his mouth and he just, he just started eating this thing. <laughs> he popped a grasshopper in his mouth. Every bug you could see started going in his mouth. And um, we went to school and we got a note hen- sent home from the principal going, Mrs. Mayor, will you please feed your child? He's eating bugs and dangling worms in his mouth in front of the girls at recess. And out of this came the song, My Brother Eats Bugs. And if you want to clap along, it would be just great. Yeah. There's no holes in my sweater that moss might have made. We never buy fly paper, never need raid. Come into our kitchen, you won't see a fly. The worms in the garden, I'll tell you why. My brother eats bugs Oh, grasshoppers, crickets, and slugs Oh, butterfly wings and other gross things My brother eats bugs When we go fishing There's one thing I hate We never catch nothing Cause he eats the bait When we have a picnic There's one thing he'll do If there's any ants, he'll eat them all too My brother eats bugs Oh, grasshoppers, crickets, and slugs Oh, butterfly wings and other gross things My brother eats bugs He munches on hornets But never gets stung But he won't eat wool He bears, they tickle his tongue We caught some fireflies One night in the park He swallowed them all Now he glows in the dark My brother eats bugs Grasshoppers, crickets, and slugs Oh, butterfly wings and other gross things My brother eats bugs I'm starting to think that My brother's part frog He even eats fleas That he picks off the dog But I'm starting to think that He's on the right track Mosquitoes bite people, he bites them back My brother eats bugs Grasshoppers, crickets, and slugs Oh, butterfly wings and other gross things My brother eats bugs My brother eats bugs My brother eats bugs My brother eats bugs bugs. Oh, nobody likes me Everybody hates me Guess I'll eat some bugs Yeah! 
That was Hans Meyer from See You Later Alligator with My Brother Eats Bugs. Before that, Bombardier Beetle was Key Wild and Mr. Clark. You're listening to the Children's Hour. I'm Katie Stone. Insects are an incredibly diverse group of creatures found all over the world. There are more than one million known species of insects, and scientists believe there could be millions more we haven't discovered yet. There are bugs that live in almost every habitat on Earth, from the hottest deserts to the coldest mountains, and even underwater in some cases. They can be found on every continent, including the icy lands of Antarctica, where some insects survive in freezing temperatures. Insects also live in surprising places, like on our bodies. Tiny bugs called lice live on our scalps, and they feed on tiny amounts of blood, while mites are so small that they can live in your hair and on your skin without you ever even noticing. These bugs are part of nature, and they've evolved to survive by living on or near humans and other animals. There are many different sizes of insects, like fairy flies, that are barely visible to the human eye. The largest, like the goliath beetle that Jason Schaller brought into the outpost, can grow as big as your hand. Their diversity doesn't stop at size, though. Bugs come in different colors, shapes, and have unique ways of moving, like flying, crawling, and jumping. Arachnids, like spiders and scorpions, are close relatives of insects, and they live in similar environments and play important roles in nature, like they help control the population of other animals. And did you know that some bugs have even gone into space? Scientists have sent fruit flies and ants on space missions to study how they behave in places with no gravity. Fruit flies were the first living creatures sent into space in 1947. Bugs help scientists learn more about what might happen to living things in space, like how their muscles might work and how they move. This research even helps us understand how humans might handle long space missions, like traveling to Mars. We've got photos and so much more posted at childrenshour.org. Look for this episode, Get Bugged. Ladybug, you've got wings. Fly away home, stay for spring. Ladybug. You've got style I like your red suit Stay a while Lightning bug You're alright Don't be scared now you are the light Lightning bug Shine so bright You're a beacon In the night Hey June bug on the porch Flying too close To the torch Hey Junebug I have to say My mom don't like you But I'm not afraid listening to the children's hour kids public radio 
We'll be right back. Users at tokenibis.org donate to the Children's Hour every week without spending a dime. You can learn more at tokenibis.org. Outpost Performance Space in Albuquerque, New Mexico is a proud supporter of the Children's Hour. Find out more at outpostspace.org. Support for the Children's Hour is provided by United Way of North Central New Mexico. Support provided by the City of Albuquerque and the Urban Enhancement Trust Fund. The Children's Hour is supported in part by New Mexico Arts, a division of the Department of Cultural Affairs and by the National Endowment for the Arts. Keep up with the Children's Hour and subscribe to our monthly newsletter at childrenshour.org. I took a walk out in a field. And when I got home, I took off my pants. Something crawled out from under my pants. I couldn't tell what it was at first glance. On my hands and knees I found it was a bug Then I lost it It disappeared in the rug Had a bug in the cuff of my pants Bug in the cuff of my pants Bug in the cuff Whoa, whoa I didn't want to kill it Something told me that was wrong So I let it go And I couldn't tell if there were spiders or ants But all I know is I had a bug all I know is I had a bug. All I know is I had a bug in the cuff of my pants. Bug in the cuff of my pants. Bug in the cuff of my pants. Bug in the cuff. Bug in the cuff. Bug in the cuff. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was Casper Baby Pants right here on the Children's Hour from a release called Here I Am, Bug in the Cuff. I'm Katie Stone, and today we're getting bugged on the Children's Hour, thinking about insects and the incredible role they play in the world around us. Did you know that some people eat insects? Eating insects might sound strange at first, but many people around the world enjoy them as part of their regular meals. Insects like crickets, grasshoppers, and mealworms are packed with important nutrients like protein and vitamins and minerals, which can help us stay healthy. Some scientists even say that eating insects is good for the environment because they need less food and water to grow compared to animals like cows or chickens. Plus, raising insects produces fewer harmful gases that cause pollution. Insects can be cooked in many different ways. They can be roasted, fried, or even made into flour for baking cookies. They taste a little bit like nuts or popcorn, and they're crunchy, which can make them fun to eat. So while it might seem weird at first, trying new foods like insects can actually help you be adventurous and help save the planet at the same time. Now, here's a simple recipe to try cricket tacos. First, you take one cup of roasted crickets, and if they aren't already roasted, you can just fry them in a little oil until they're crispy. Then grab some taco shells and fill them with shredded lettuce, diced tomatoes, and a little bit of cheese if you'd like. Add a handful of the crickets on top and drizzle some salsa, and here in New Mexico we would say add green chili. Maybe squeeze a little lime juice on top for extra flavor. And there you have it. Delicious, crunchy cricket tacos. Are you brave enough to try it? We've posted this recipe at childrenshour.org. Look for the episode, Get Bugged. We got a little bit more time here on the Children's Hour. This is Elliot Park from Songs With My Daughters. your invitation yet to the hippest gig that's ever been the band is small but it'll drop your jaw down by the shed where the grass is high when the moon comes up this saturday night come on come off to the crickets ball click bugs keeping that swinging beat cicada sally with the tambourine 
Listen to the little mosquitoes sing Crickets with their fiddle feet If you're too big, if you're too tall Well that's okay, you can watch it all through the old knot hole And the tool shed wall And cut worms, cut and throw The dance floor's lit with lightning bugs You'll dance all night with your guy or doll From the first refrain to the curtain call Come one, come all To the cricket's ball Yeah, come one, come all To the cricket's ball That's the Bug Song, sung in Salish, brought to us by the Confederated Salish Kootenai Tribes there out of western Montana. You're listening to the Children's Hour today. We're getting bugged. You can follow along with our whole playlist at childrenshour.org. Look for this episode, Get Bugged. And now you can find our playlists on Spotify. We're putting our playlists from almost all of our shows, thanks to our intern, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. You can find that Spotify link at every episode's webpage. So check them out at childrenshour.org. We're getting bugged, but sometimes when we get bugged, we don't really mind, like butterflies. No one minds being bugged by butterflies, do we? This is the Nields right here on the Children's Hour. Metamorphosis 
caterpillar falls apart and meets the infinite cocoon and meets the infinite so when you decompose don't you lose heart don't you lose heart she doesn't know what's in here she doesn't know I've got to hide queer charming charming
just a tiny mosquito buzz 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 buzzing you all night long i'm just a tiny mosquito buzz 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 buzzing my favorite song late at night i need a bite i'm hungry i depend on a warm blooded friend oh i'm just a tiny mosquito buzz 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 every time i see the cover slip hear the snoring lip just a little sip they will hardly even know i'm there no they won't miss a drip how sweet the nectar that the humans bring it's a lovely spring gives me cause to sing and the luckiest bug in the air i'm just a tiny mosquito buzz 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 you missed me bloody good try buzz 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 that's gunner madsen with tiny mosquito from old mr macklehackle DJ Willy Wow before that from It's All Good in the Naturehood with Butterflies. You're listening to the Children's Hour. I'm Katie Stone. It's been a day to get creeped out by bugs, but we really didn't, even though we let bugs loose in the outpost. We did collect them all, just so you know. You can send us your feedback at childrenshour.org. Look for our contact page. We'll catch you next time for another edition of the Children's Hour. The Children's Hour is produced by the Children's Hour Incorporated, a New Mexico nonprofit. You can find photos, links, learn along guides, and more about us at childrenshour.org. Today's show was written and produced by me, Katie Stone, with production help from Gus Tafoya and Daniel Lentz. Many thanks to Jason Schaller, curator of entomology at the Albuquerque Biopark, for being with us on the show today. Find our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, or go to our patreon.com slash the children's hour. Or ask your smart speaker to play the children's hour podcast. We post our photos and more on Instagram and Facebook. Find us at TCH Radio. Our theme music was written by C.K. Barlow. The Children's Hour is distributed by Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network. Thanks for listening to the Children's Hour, Kids Public Radio.